At night, if it is cloudless, our atmosphere is transparent and we can see straight through it to observe the moon and stars. But during the day, the sky is a glowing blue, the stars are obscured and we see our sun as a yellowy orange glowing ball. If during the day we were to fly up through the atmosphere in a rocket, the blue sky would gradually give way to the blackness of space and we could once again see the stars in all their glory. Though from space, the sun would be a bright white rather than a yellow. The moon, by contrast, has no atmosphere, so a person on the lunar surface can look straight out into the blackness of space where the stars are always visible. In this picture, which was taken from the moon, you can see the incredibly bright white sun. The reason you can't see any stars is that the exposure settings and focus of the camera aren't optimised for capturing the relatively small and dim stars, but they're there. So it's our atmosphere that produces the blue sky during the day. But why is it blue rather than some other colour? And why is our atmosphere transparent at night? Well, to understand these things, there are some facts we need to know about light and colour. You may already know that light is an electromagnetic wave. It's part of a much larger spectrum of electromagnetic waves, and it's the only part of the spectrum that we can detect with our eyes. Each colour we see corresponds to a certain wavelength, with red having the longest wavelength, and violet having the shortest wavelength. If you combine all the colours of the spectrum, you see white light. Indeed, we can reverse the process. We can split white light up into its constituent parts by passing it through a triangular prism. Our sun is a very hot object and it emits electromagnetic radiation over a wide range of wavelengths. This chart shows the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation emitted by our sun. The horizontal axis shows wavelength increasing to the right and the vertical axis shows you the amount of radiation being emitted at a particular wavelength. We can see that the highest amounts of radiation emitted by the Sun are in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. This may well be why our eyes are optimized to detect the visible spectrum. We have some radiation in the ultraviolet range, these waves are energetic enough to damage living cells and it is the ultraviolet rays which give us sunburn. As we move down through the infrared to longer and longer wavelengths towards radio waves, we can see that the amount of radiation is dropping off. Since the sun is emitting all the colours of the visible spectrum, when we look at the sun from space we would expect it to be a bright white, and indeed it is. But what happens to the colour of the sun when we look at it through our atmosphere from the surface of the Earth. Earth's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen and oxygen, and these particles are the right size to interact with the blue end of the visible spectrum. Light travels from the Sun through space in straight lines, but when it approaches Earth, the molecules in the upper atmosphere can cause it to scatter in different directions. But here's the important bit. Blue light with a smaller wavelength scatters much, much more than light of a longer wavelength, such as red light. In effect, light at the blue end of the visible spectrum gets scattered in all directions, while light at the red end largely carries on in a straight line. The phenomenon is called Raleigh scattering and is named after Lord Raleigh, an English scientist who first described this process in the 1870s and got the Nobel Prize in Physics for this work in 1904. So let's see how this affects what we see in the sky. Let's look at two scenarios, the view from the moon with no atmosphere and the view from Earth with an atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen. Consider an observer on the moon looking directly at the sun. That's what this eye represents. Since light travels in straight lines through a vacuum and the sun is emitting all the colours of the visible spectrum, the observer perceives this as white light. So he sees the sun as a bright white glowing ball in the sky. Now consider a second observer looking towards this star here. There's nothing to obstruct light travelling all the way from the star to the observer, so he sees it even though the sun is shining brightly in the heavens. And of course, an empty patch of space like this emits no light at all, so an observer looking here just sees the blackness of space. Now let's look at the situation from planet Earth. 
Well, if the Earth had no atmosphere, the situation would be the same as for the Moon. And we'd look up into the sky and we'd see the blackness of space, the stars and a white sun. But we have got an atmosphere. So here's an observer looking directly at the sun. And this line marks the top of our atmosphere. As we know, the sun emits white light. But for this analysis, let's consider it as the separate colours of the spectrum. The light travels in a straight line. But when it interacts with the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen in the upper atmosphere, the blue end of the spectrum is scattered in all directions, while the red end carries on largely in a straight line. So when you take out the colours at the blue end of the spectrum, what you're left with is a yellowy-orange colour. So an observer looking at the sun no longer sees it as a white ball, he sees a yellowy-orange ball. And the same is true for an observer in any other location looking at the sun. The sun emits all the colours of the visible spectrum, the blue end of the spectrum gets scattered by the molecules in the atmosphere, while the red end carries largely straight on, and the observer sees the sun as a yellow ball in the sky. But what about an observer that isn't looking directly at the sun? Well, he doesn't see the blackness of space. What he sees is the scatter's blue light, some of which makes it into his eye. Since the sun is illuminating the entire atmosphere, if you're not looking at the sun directly, but are looking somewhere else in the sky, what you're actually going to see is the scattered blue light. So our entire atmosphere appears to glow blue. Since the blue light from the scattering is brighter than the faint light from the stars, the stars are obscured and we can no longer see them when we look up into the sky. And at night, there is no sun in the sky, of course. So there are no rays of light coming from the sun. So we have no blue scattering by the atoms in our atmosphere. So the atmosphere isn't illuminated. And that's why our atmosphere is transparent at night and we can see straight through it to the stars in the sky. So now you know why the sky is blue and the sun is yellow.